How's it going today everybody and welcome to the Never Empty Bottle. I'm still Tyler and today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be a little bit more relaxed. Uh, no cocktail is going to be made today. So what I'm going to do for you instead is just show you guys what's on my shelf. Um, for all the videos you guys have seen in the past, you kind of have always been able to see my shelf a little bit. So today I'm just going to show you what I have. Um, whether it's my whiskeys, my rums, my tequilas. Uh, I just want to share it all with you guys. So we'll go spirit by spirit, just kind of show you each one that I have individually. Um, little uh, spoiler alert, I have a lot of some and very little of others. So let's go ahead and let's get after it. So let's start this out with a bang here. So we're gonna go out with my rum. So these are all my rums that I currently have on my shelf right now. Um, obviously I've gone through some here in the past. I usually have Bacardi light rum. Um, I have the uh, gold and spice currently. I, Bacardi for me is a very simple um, rum to always have on hand. I think it tastes uh, good for its quality and its price. Uh, I also have my Black Seal rum, which is really great for dark and stormies, your coconut, and of course a little Captain. Uh, these two at the end, I love these two. I got my Cross Keys and my Plantation, which I got from Alchemix. Uh, they sent me, or they gave me a bottle as a gift. Um, these to me are, a good stock for rums you know I, I probably don't need this many spice rums but I, I love them I love rum I think it's an amazing spirit it goes well in any tropical drinks or just kind of goes well with a lot of things honestly but um, let me know what other kind of rums you guys think I should incorporate in here um, maybe any other rums or any cocktails that you guys suggest I use with these uh, particular rums so that's really what that's gonna be about you know what you guys think I should maybe have and what I can make with it so these are my rums so like I said, I don't have a ton of bottles of everything. Um, this being one of them, this is my gin. I have Felishman's here, which is an extra dry gin. Uh, most commonly, I see a lot of people using Beef Eater, which I've had Beef Eater before, and I think it's great. Um, Tanqueray, I think, is also a really good gin. Uh, I just, I don't usually make a ton of drinks with gin. I've started to more um, here recently, but uh, maybe besides Tanqueray or uh, uh, Beef Eater, let me know what other kind of gins I can throw on my shelf here. Um, I think Fleishman's great. It's very cheap. It's only like a $10 bottle. And honestly, for the most part, I, 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 it tastes like gin to me. I think a lot of gins, you know, you get some of the floral and some of the, uh, the juniper notes out of it. But for the most part, gin is kind of gin to me. So um, let me know what else I can put on the shelf. So this next one is a little bit funny uh, because I'm not a huge vodka drinker. Uh, for me, I think most people could possibly agree, vodka is just kind of a filler for me uh, in those cocktails that require it. So you can really go with any brand here. So yeah, if you can see, I have these two massive monsters on the end, they're the exact same bottle um, because they're only 15 bucks for these giant 1.75 liters, 15 bucks. It's insane. And I get I get those for my cocktails. Um, you know, some of these other ones, like I got a $5 bottle of, what's this, five o'clock? That's just diesel, it's gasoline. And then this batch one I got, you know, just because I wanted to see what it was like. But for the most part, vodka's vodka. Um, I do like the flavored ones. I think they are a little more unique. Um, so like the rosé, I think it definitely tastes different compared to these other ones. And then same with the, the blueberry and the raspberry, which I actually really like doing the flavored vodkas and like my Moscow mules. I think it tastes amazing. Um, we also usually have a bottle of Western Sun on hand. Uh, Western Sun is a vodka brand that has a ton of different flavors from blueberry to prickly pear. Um, I think they have a cucumber one. It's amazing. I actually do really like those as well. Um, but yeah, so let me know what kind of other vodkas. Maybe you guys can change my mind on a different style of vodka or a different type of vodka that'll make me think not all vodka is the same. So let me know. Um, let me know some vodka cocktails. I do really, really enjoy vodka cocktails as well. So going to what I have a lot of to going to what I have a little of. I actually, I've, I've said in my videos in the past, not a big, I wasn't a big tequila fan, but in the past year doing a lot of these videos, doing a lot of these recipes, I have actually come to really, really like tequila. Um, I think it is great in cocktails, whether it's a margarita, um, it's a palome, you know, whatever it is. It's, I think they are great. So right now the only thing I have on hand is Luna Zool because I've been going through so much of my tequila lately. And then this is actually a mezcal called Bainez, Bainez, and Bainez makes more sense. But um, I actually haven't even opened this up yet. I have not had the pleasure um, of using this in a cocktail yet. So let me know what my, maybe my first uh, mezcal cocktail can be. Um, but I'm very excited to start using this. In the past, I have had Espolone. Um, I think that's a very good tequila. Uh, Hemidor, I do really like Hemidor. Um, I have not had the privilege of having Terramana yet. Um, that is on my list of things to do, just because, you know, The Rock, he's cool. It's, you know. Um, after, as far as, you know, types of tequila, 
Reposado is gonna be my go-to every single time, I think. Um, I do like Blanco, um, and then you have Anejo as well. So it just kind of depends on what your preference is, but I definitely, I go Reposado almost every single time. So um, give me some more tequila brands. Give me some more things I can put on the shelf, uh, whether it's you know high end or it's low cost. I, I'm curious to see what you guys prefer. So next we're gonna have my brandies here. Um, I was never a brandy guy. I kinda thought brandy was a very like expensive, like high class society, kinda swirl it with a cigar kinda drink. Um, so over the last year though, I've kind of expanded my brandy palette. Um, my go-to is going to be right here at the end. This is gonna be my Christian Brothers. Um, very sweet, very rich. Um, I, it's kind of that cocktail I like after dinner. Um, it's all, not a dessert cocktail necessarily, but a little bit kind of. Um, it's very inexpensive for as big of a bottle this is. I think this guy was like only 20 bucks. It, it's great, it's, to me, I have not yet gotten a chance to expand to more expensive spirits um, necessarily because I'm still trying to find what I want, what I like. And until I figure that out, you know, I don't really wanna spend a ton of money and I don't think the average cocktail maker wants to spend a ton of money on their spirits um, until they know what they like. So this one is a great bang for your buck. This is my go-to every single time. Next here in the middle is my Laird's. So this is a 100 proof apple brandy. Uh, this, I honestly only got for the holidays this last year, um, over, you know, when the weather was a little bit colder. This is amazing for some of those um, cocktails, you know, at night you get the fire going, um, whether it's like an apple cider cocktail, um, apple pie, anything like that. It is amazing for it. It's such, a, it's, and it's got good, good bite to it. I was not ready for it. I was thinking like, oh, apple juice. Wrong, 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 wrong. This mofo, powerful. Lastly, we have my St. Remy's, who I have not had very long. Um, I've only made a few uh, cocktails with it, but it comes from, uh, you know, grapes and wine, uh, I, or I believe the grapes and wine kind of all fall in the same thing. So it's a little bit sweeter, a little bit fruitier, um, but it also has a nice like peppery bite to the end. Like it's a little spicy. I, was honestly thinking this was gonna be like a wine until I drank it and about coughed up a lung. It was, it's it's there. It's still kind of a strong uh, spirit there, but it's still very delicious. Um, these are my brandies. Let me know uh, what other kind of uh, brandies I should maybe be using, what brands you guys prefer. I made the Brandy Swizzle, I believe was my very second cocktail I ever made on my channel and I freaking love it. It became one of my favorite cocktails of the year so um any other cocktails you guys have in mind let me know you guys can obviously tell which is my favorite of the spirits this is my whiskey uh i have absolutely the most of this out of anything why maybe you ask is because i love whiskey um, a lot of my friends like whiskey and my wife likes whiskey so it just works that we have a buttload of it we never run out i always have something on stock or i'm always going on you know whiskey runs but let's go through some of these <laughs> Uh, I know in my, a lot of my recent videos, you guys have been seeing me use Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is absolutely one of my most favorites. Um, actually, another one is um, Jim Beam. I love using Jim Beam. I actually, uh, this bottle's completely empty. I just wanted to show you guys that I will buy it in bulk like this because that's how much I enjoy it. Um, those are made my most like favorite high quality. Um, I also have um, Bib and Tucker here, which is a six year age whiskey. It's very delicious, received that as a gift. Um, Evan Williams, I think I have a few. I have Evan Williams bourbon and honey. Those are very delicious. They're very, uh, in a, you know, inexpensive. So these are only $15 each. This one is without a doubt my coolest bottle. This is um, American Barrels bourbon. It's got a shotgun shells at the bottom. Such a cool bottle. I freaking love it. I got my Irish whiskeys here. I got my Peaky Blonder for those of you who like the show. And then I also got my Proper 12. Um, I think Irish whiskey is very important. I think all whiskeys are very important to have on hand. Um, George Dickel, 12 year sour mash, very, very delicious. Templeton Rye, uh, they actually just came out with a uh, 10 year aged bottle that I need to get my hands on because I do live here in Iowa. I only live about an hour and a half away from the distillery, so I need to get my hands on a bottle of that. Um, we have some rye whiskey here with some Ezra Brooks. Maker's Mark, I think is a delicious bourbon whiskey. Um, I love Maker's Mark, it's awesome. Uh, Revel Stoke, this one sucks. Um, I, I, it's pecan flavored whiskey and I, there's nothing I can make with it. I do shots with it because I don't know what else to do with it. I put it in a multiple cocktails and every single time I just, no, no I say. It's just not good. 
So if you guys have any ideas for pecan whiskey, let me know. Um, and then I just got some other ones here. I believe this is my Seagram 7, so it's a blended whiskey. And then last I have my um, Bird Dog Peach Whiskey, which this guy is very, very tasty. I love my peach bird dog. Um, I'm sad because it's almost empty. A lot of these are almost empty. That's my problem, I think, is that like they get to the end and I think like I can't do without them, so I need to go restock. So, And then lastly, I have Green Label Johnny Walker Scotch uh, whiskey here. So it's I have yet to open this up. I'm going to this week, actually, for my wedding, so that's gonna be super exciting. Um, I'll finally get to open up that bottle, but um, yeah, I have a fairly good assortment of whiskeys. I feel like a little bit of, you know, from bourbon to rye to blended. So I got a little bit of everything, but there is always room for whiskey on my shelf. So please, please let me know what I can do by incorporating more whiskey into my life. And here we have the coffee based spirits. Uh, this is first one. I'll just kind of go this one. I just kind of bought on a whim. I knew I needed a coffee liqueur. Um, when I was kind of getting the bar set up and get together. So it's called Cafe Lolita. Uh, it's not bad. It's not, it's just, you know, it's okay. Uh, it's definitely my least favorite of the three here, but it's just, it's kind of something that got me by. It was only like $12. So um, a lot of the stuff I get when I'm first trying out, I'm always gonna go with the lower brand because I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not. So this was what I went with this time around. Kahlua, I really, really like because it's sweet and it goes into a lot of good um, coffee cocktails because it's always gonna make it kind of a sweeter um, drink, almost like chocolate or dessert. Um, probably goes well in ice cream, uh, but it's just, it goes well in coffee. It's just a very, very good coffee liqueur, in my opinion, it's just very sweet. But the best, and everyone probably knows this at this point, it's gonna be Mr. Black coffee liqueur here. This was a gift as well from also Carl and Riley at Alchemix. So thank you guys for all the awesome bottles you guys give me. But they say don't meet your heroes. Screw that. I'm glad I met Mr. Black because it is delicious. It is the coffee flavor I'm looking for with the alcohol, um, the just the infusion of it. It's bitter. It's not as sweet as the Kahlua. It just it tastes like coffee. It tastes like alcoholic coffee. That's what I want. I love my coffee. Kahlua and Mr. Black are probably like the two main ones. I don't know how much farther I need to expand than those, but um, if you guys got any ideas, let me know. So this is the, like the last segment pretty much of what I'm going to show you guys. This is pretty much what's remaining. Uh, whether I didn't know how to classify it or I didn't know what category to put it in, these are kind of the uh, Island of Misfit toys here. So I got a little bit of everything. I have, you know, my fillers. So I have, I have my sweetness over here with my, my, uh, my blue curacao. I have my sour apple there. Um, I got things like my peach schnapps. I love my peach schnapps. Very delicious. Uh, my orange liqueur, this is 03. This is kind of what I use to replace my Grand Marnier or uh, any orange curacao. This is kind of what I use um, just because it's a little bit cheap. Because Grand Marnier is like 40 bucks, I think, for a bottle. This is more like 25 bucks, so a little bit cheaper. Um, you got your Campari and your uh, Aperol over here, which I, I love both of them. I haven't gotten a ton of use out of both of them yet, but they are very, very delicious. There's a lot of great cocktails to do with this. Um, I made my spicy cocktail with the Aperol, um, the El Chipilo. Oh, so good. My Midori, uh, your melon liqueur here, I have really started using that. I used it a ton when I first got it. I made like nine cocktails in a row. And then I took a break, but I've kind of whipped it out again because it's green, it's fun, it's summertime, um, it's good stuff. So it's very cool. It gives a kind of a little description of the officer that's uh, in their picture that's on the bottle. I have no idea what this is though, as far as um, a spirit. I have not yet figured it out yet. And you look it up and just keeps calling it a spirit. It's like, well, everything's a spirit. I'm thinking it's a whiskey of some kind, but it's really, really hard to differentiate between that and the whiskeys I have. So I'm not sure, to be determined. Um, I also have some vanilla back here. I love vanilla in cocktails. I love vanilla in general, the smell, the taste, everything. So I have my Dr. McKillicuddy's raw vanilla liqueur here, which I've been using um, this quite a bit lately. And then also I have a vanilla cognac, which is called Mikau. Mikau. So Mikau with the with the uh, Jaguar. It's, I honestly bought this bottle because it just looks sweet. And it was like 18 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I've never owned cognac before. So let's go ahead and get us some. So I got that, but the vanilla flavor, um, it's really good. I, I think I used that in my um, St. Patty's Day cocktail. For those of you who watch my channel, you already know how I feel about this. 
This is this is my baby. I've gone through so many of these bottles. I I freaking love my amaretto people. It's just it's one of the best flavor teasers if you want to call it. I don't know. It's so sweet. It's so amazing. It goes well in a lot of things. I love it. Next, I have my triple sec. Obviously, this goes in your you know your margaritas or this goes essentially this would go with my O3. Um, these two kind of stacked on top of each other. So. Um, I use a lot of triple sec in a lot of things. I honestly like to kind of experiment with it, it being kind of a lighter orange liqueur. Um, I'll throw it in Moscow Mules, I'll throw it in just kind of random stuff, just to see what it tastes like. See, you know, I, I, that's this is maybe my biggest experimenting bottle I have, is my triple sec. Um, Southern Comfort I got for one of my cocktails, I can't remember when, and I have a hard time using it. Um, reminds me of college too much, reminds me of throwing up in my toilet too much. Um, not a fan of Southern Comfort these days. We speak to each other every once in a while, but it's more of a, you know, a pass, we pass by, just like, eh, good to see you. This guy here at the end is my, um, is it a Amaro Averna? Yeah, Amaro Averna, so this is my Amaro. I have not yet opened this bottle up. I have not yet experimented really with any Amaros, so this is gonna be uh, my request to you guys to maybe give me an Amaro cocktail I can use this in. Uh, I, I have no idea. I just, I know this is something that I see in a lot of different things and I would love to try it, but let me know what you guys have tried. Let me know maybe which one I should do or which ones I should stay away from. And then we also have our Paramounts here. So I have my creme de cacao. Um, I love my creme de cacao. It goes in a lot of stuff. I think it's very delicious. Um, it's also extremely fun to say. So creme de cacao, it's almost like a cat. Just, yeah, creme de cacao. And then my creme de menthe. Um, I don't get a ton of use out of this always. Um, I wish I did. I just am not a terribly big peppermint guy always. Um, I've made some very good cocktails with it. I just, I don't usually go uh, looking for the peppermint cocktails. Um, they fall on my lap every now and then and I'll use them. But other than that, let me know some maybe other creme de menthe ones I can use. But these I would call, I don't know, my fillers, my Island of Misfit drinks. Uh, this is a fun ragtag group of bottles here. I love using all of them. I am a big fan of them. And for the most part, all of these are fairly inexpensive. Really, there's not one up here that's, I think the most expensive one might be either the Campari or the Amaro. Like, all of these, $20 range, if that. A lot of these in the $15, $10 range, so fairly inexpensive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I have on my shelf. I know week to week you guys kind of get it from a different angle and you can't really look at all my bottles. So this was me kind of just opening up and sharing with you guys what I have. Um, also kind of shows you kind of some of my experience and some of my expertise or lack thereof in some of these areas. So um, this is me, you know, asking for you guys to give me some ideas or this is maybe hopefully me giving you guys some ideas on alcohol that you guys can uh, use in the future. So. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you guys like this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, give this video a like and comment away as much as you want. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Drink on.